Hello everyone and welcome to dev vlog number 12. Um, this time around there wasn't too much that was 100% completed, um, but there was a lot of progress made on the necromancer class, so that's what I'm going to show this time around. So here's our necromancer class. Alright, I'm going to go to the forge and see what items we can get for her. So all of these assets are placeholder right now. If you notice, they're just the knight assets. Um, those are, again, just placeholder until all of the equipment is designed and functional and then we'll get assets for everything. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the first item. So the first item is a weapon. It's called the skull. And what this does is it summons up to five remains that each deal 0.75 damage. Newly summoned remains will replace the lowest health remains. So if I equip this guy, there we go. We got our remains. So I'm gonna mention a little bit uh, about the necromancer allies or minions. So once again, these are placeholder assets, um, but you can see if I move, my minions will take the place in front of me. They occupy an arc of 180 degrees in front of my character. So as I'm moving, they'll kind of be a buffer between me and the next group of enemies. And the way that commanding the allies works, I'll show it, uh, I'll go into the level and show it in a little bit here, is it's like an inverse RTS. So if I click my left mouse button and I drag, I get a selection box. And when I release my left mouse button, I do my attack animation, and any enemy that is inside of that box becomes a potential target for my allies. And the allies will keep attacking all the enemies that were selected until the last enemy is dead, or until you go out of range of the group. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this. Okay, so we're in our dungeon, and so now I have a group of four enemies here. If I select these two guys, my allies are going to go and kill them, and then they're going to be done. Now notice how they're not aggressive. They don't attack until I explicitly select enemies. So if I go ahead and select those guys now, they will go ahead and kill them. So this works with larger group of enemies too. So we'll get all four of them. And you'll notice that they also do a taunt where if they're attacking an enemy, that enemy will turn and attack them. So let's get these guys all targeted up. And notice how they swap targets until the last enemy that you selected is dead. Now you can, of course, deselect, so I can select these guys and say, wait, I don't want to do that. So I'll just do a quick left click over here to get them away, and then I'll send them back in. And then my right click summons and replaces the lowest health ally available. So you can see I have five out, but some of them are very low. So if I right click, I'm going to summon a new guy that will replace this one right here. Okay, and then now I can replace that one, and now I can replace that one. Okay, and if they're all the same health, um, it will just take whichever one happens to be in the last sorted order. Okay, so that's generally how all the weapons are going to work. The weapons will give you some allies that you can control like that. And yeah, that's about it. So let's take a look at the legendary affixes that are available for the skull specifically. We have a summon all, oh, also worth mentioning is that as the rarity goes up, the number of remains that you can have summoned goes up. So at Legendary, I can have seven out. Anyway, I have a Summon All and an Area Damage affix. Summon All will summon all the remains at once, and Area Damage deals damage where the summons are located. So I'm just gonna put both of those on and equip them. And you can see, now I have seven summons, and those green areas were actually explosive areas there. So now if I go ahead and summon them again, you can see that I resummon all of them at once and do big, explosion of green and the cooldown is longer to compensate for the fact that you can summon all of them at once but that's the skull okay so the next item is the crown of teeth this is an item that will spawn a decay totem that pulses teeth every two seconds that deal two damage and slow enemies by 60 percent so i'm going to go ahead and equip that base item just to show you so if i press my q so this is all placeholder again but you can see that this is a radius that pulses and it will deal damage and slow enemies. Okay, so let's go into the game and take a look at how that actually plays out. So I have my minions. I'll plant this down 
the enemies will get slowed and it will deal damage. Let's see if I can get a better, yeah, there we go. So it's dealing damage and slowing enemies in that area. So let's take a look now at the legendary affixes that are available for this. So we have rats and uproot. With the rats um, legendary affix, which I don't have a description for yet, um, it will spawn naked mole rats, decaying naked mole rats that will um, seek out and uh, poison enemies and then uproot allows the totem to kind of uproot itself from the ground and move towards nearby enemies So I'm gonna put both those on just so we can see and again, this is all placeholder So don't be surprised when you see the naked mole rat So if I go ahead and place this guy down You can see that he's spawning what is our knight character Which is the naked mole rat and they are going and attacking and you can see the totem actually uprooted itself so that it can move closer to enemies See, it's moving there. And then I can get my allies to target that. So the naked mole rats, the decaying naked mole rats, they have a lifetime, they lose health per second. And so, yeah, so let's do another group here. And that's that. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. We have our Grave Digger's Trench Coat. This will summon a behemoth that deals damage and knocks back enemies. And so let's just take a look at that guy for now. So I'm gonna equip that guy. Okay, so I'm gonna press space. Again, it's just the knight placeholder, um, but this behemoth will be kind of a large guy and he'll, he has a lifetime as well of five seconds currently. And during that lifetime, he'll seek out and push enemies into walls, kick enemies into walls, rather. Okay, so let's see how he works without any legendary affixes. So we'll place him down, and you can see he just smacked something, sent them flying, we're all good. Cool, so let's take a look at the legendary affixes for that guy. We have a leap and insta kill. So leap, the behemoth can leap to new loca locations, so he can actually move faster, um, basically. And then he will instantly kill an enemy every time he does an attack. So let's put both of those on, and we'll see how that plays out. So I'm gonna summon the behemoth, and he jumps into the enemies and knocks them back. And then he also kills one every time instantly. I don't know if you saw that, but he'll kill a guy right here. There, he killed one right there. He killed another one. So every time he does an attack, he'll kill, he'll instantly kill one enemy. Now this doesn't apply to bosses, so don't worry about that. It won't be OP, he can't instantly kill a boss. Okay, and the last item for this time around is the Saint's Knuckle. So this item spawns grasping hands in an area that drastically slow enemies, and then it also makes allies more likely to attack enemies that are caught in that area. Okay, and then the legendary affixes are hold and spirit. So hold is enemies are just slowed um, to 100%, so they will not move at all. And then spirit is enemies that die in an area will spawn fast moving, short lived spirits that deal damage to enemies once and perish. So these are guys that are just gonna go really fast up to a single target, hit them, and then they're gonna deal damage and then they're gonna die. So let's just put both of those on. So let's see what this ability looks like. So there's our grasping hands, again, placeholder art, but that is the area of effect. Okay. So I'll go into the game now and we'll see how that plays out. Okay, so I'm gonna put that down and see how they're held in place. We're using the chainmail totem art as placeholder art to indicate that they're held there. Okay, so now I'm going to kill some guys that are caught in there. And you can see there's ghouls, or goblins that spawn rather. They will, um, for larger packs, they will go around and kill enemies, but there were no enemies there, so they didn't attack anything. So let me see if I can, here's a good group of enemies to get together, okay. So now we can see that all the Goblins going up and see how they're very short-lived. They go up and they smack something and they die instantly. Let's see that again There you go So yeah, that is the necromancer the four necromancer items so far 
Um, there are going to be more that are going to be in development for the next couple weeks, so by next dev vlog there should be a few more to show off. Okay, let's head on over to the Trello board. Okay, so I'm just going to talk to the Trello board just a little bit here. There's a couple of things I didn't show. Um, Pumpkin Boss assets are in already. Um, or are in finally rather, so that boss is completely done. All the pumpkin spawn have assets. Um, there was some new audio assets, which I didn't show off because there's a there's a bunch of them and it, it, I don't think it was worth showing in the video, but there are a bunch of new audio assets. And then character swapping between the Necromancer and the Knight was finished. There were some outstanding bugs left with it that were fixed. Um, yeah, and then so our in progress is still the Necromancer stuff. I've written down um, the equipment that I've covered um, and there will be more equipment in there and then the next up is I mean it's basically just uh, bugs and polishing up so uh, we're just developing content for the necromancer and kind of generally polishing the game as we go on and and yeah that's what that's what's going on so thank you for watching this dev vlog if you guys are interested in the game you can check out the links in the description below um, I stream Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. So if you want to check out how development of the game is going, feel free to pop in there. You can join the Discord to talk about Tenacious or anything else, really. And uh, I hope to see you guys on the stream and in the next dev vlog.